Dr. Muhammad Muhsin Khan. He passed away at the age of 97 after living a century amongst us. And his story is very inspiring because it gives hope to those who are not even ulama. It, you don't have to have ilm to benefit the ummah. You don't have to have traveled, traveled and studied ilm just to benefit the ummah. You can benefit the ummah no matter what your field is. Dr. Muhammad Muhsin Khan, he is the person who first translated Sahih al-Bukhari into the English language. And he translated the Quran and other books into the English language when no such translation existed. But his story is very interesting. Dr. Muhsin Khan was born in an Afghan family uh, in, of course, uh, pre-partition India. And born in the 1920s. And he was of the first batches to study abroad, overseas, in the West. He studied in England and he got his MBBS, which is his degree in medicine. And then he pursued a speciality of heart and chest diseases. This is in the 1950s when hardly any Muslim was living in the West, much less studying in the West. So he became top notch in his field. And then an offer came to him from King Abdul Aziz of Saudi Arabia to come and be in charge of the speciality unit of heart and chest diseases in the military hospital. It's a very prestigious, very well paying. He said this to me directly. He said, I was not a religious person and I did not choose the job to go to Saudi Arabia, to go to Mecca and Medina. I chose the job because it paid well. He said this to me directly. I chose the job because it paid well. I left England and I went to the city of At-Ta'if, which was where the military hospital was. This is in the late 50s. And he stayed there and he established his credentials. Then in 1961, the Islamic University of Medina, where I studied for 10 years, it opened up. In 1961, they needed a hospital for the students and faculty and staff. And I have visited that hospital a few times. So they needed a, a, a doctor, excuse me. But it's 1961. And back then, there are no qualified Muslim doctors. You have to be a Muslim to live in Medina. So by royal decree, not that he wanted it, Dr. Muhsin Khan was transferred to become the chief doctor for the University of Medina. As a doctor, not as an alim, not as a sheikh. And he entered Medina as a doctor because of the salary. How many amongst us would love to live there because of the religion? And he told me this directly. I went there because of the job and because the king forced me. I didn't want to go to Medina because he had a good position in Thai, but he went to Medina. And he said, within a few weeks, I saw the Prophet ﷺ in a dream. And it's a very long dream. And at the one port of, portion of the dream, the Prophet was sweating. And he, uh, Dr. Muhsin Khan, he took that sweat and he drank it. He woke up and he was shocked. What does this dream mean? He went to the rector of the university, his uh, Sheikh bin Baz, the famous, the, the, the Grand Mufti at the time. This is 1960 something. He went to Sheikh bin Baz and he said, Sheikh, you know, I'm the doctor of your hospital. I saw this dream. What does it mean? The Sheikh said to him, this means you are going to benefit the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dr. Muhsin told us, I was shocked. I am a medical doctor. I'm not a sheikh, an alim. I don't know anything about Islam. I'm not even that religious back in that day. But Allah had plans for him. Allah had plans for him that even he did not know. He was shocked. He goes, what can I do that can benefit the sunnah? So he said, I began asking around. Because he knew that this is a dream, he has to do something. And he discovered, this is 1960 something, that these famous and important books had not been translated. Nobody spoke fluent Arabic and fluent English at the time. And he realized that he spoke fluent English because he's trained in England for so many years. He spoke fluent English. So he said, the idea then came to me that perhaps Allah Azza wa is showing me to translate these books for the ummah. But he didn't have any ilm. So he went to Sheikh bin Baz. Sheikh bin Baz assigned him another great scholar, Dr. Taqiyuddin al Hilali. He was a, a Moroccan scholar uh, who, back in the 1930s, went to Germany when Nazis were ruling it. And he did his PhD in Islamic studies. So he spoke French and German and English and Arabic, a multilingual scholar. So he was assigned Dr. Taqiyuddin and Dr. Muhsin Khan, the two of them. In the 1960s, when there was no authentic translation of the Quran done by Muslims, back then it was done by non-Muslims, and no book of hadith had been translated by this point in time. And the two of them sat together, he gave up his job, and they translated, mashallah, tabarakallah, the entirety of Sahih al-Bukhari, and a commentary of the Quran. One of them is multi-volume, and the other one is one volume. Now, why am I telling you this story? Because for me, it's such an inspiring story that 
you can benefit the ummah in a global scale. I am positive that 95% of you know Dr. Muhsin Khan, but you don't know his story. You have his translation at home, but you don't know anything about him. Do you know he's not a sheikh? He's not an alim. He didn't study full-time Islamic studies. He himself was shocked. How can I help the ummah? But Allah Azza wa had a plan for him. So with ikhlas, under the guidance of, ilm, of ulama, and with sincerity, and with humility and humbleness, and wallahi, I met him a number of times, you would not even think that this is a medical doctor from England with prestigious degrees and money. You would not even know this. Such a humble and simple person. He would be lost in the crowd. You would not know him if you didn't know who he was. And yet what he did literally impacted the English-speaking world in its entirety. What is the takeaway message, dear Muslims? Very simple. You too can benefit the ummah in your own way. Don't let barriers that you put in your head, like he himself said, I haven't studied ilm. Okay, but I have something else I can do. I have another talent that Allah has given me. Every one of you sitting here without a question, without a doubt, you have something to contribute that is unique to you. No one other than you can do what you can do. So think, what can I do? And then do it. And Allah will open up doors. And how do you know? What do you know? Maybe the door that opens up in front of you will be a door that will benefit the entirety of the ummah and will leave a sadaqah jariyah, the likes of which you cannot even imagine.